Emailing, texting, and social networking has become a regular part of daily life for most of us. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, MySpace, Google+, and hundreds if not thousands more social networking sites are out there in the cloud. Facebook alone has over 750 million visitors per month, and as international events have shown us, the influence of the communications exchanged via social networking and other forms of electronic communication have even been the driving force behind political and governmental change around the world. So it should be no surprise that your electronic communications, postings, and comments on social networking websites or via email or texting or any other electronic format could easily influence the outcome of your family law case. And if you think that hitting the delete button will protect you, Think again. Evidence may be the key to the outcome of most types of litigation, including matters that settle without ever appearing in court. Your family law case is no exception. Evidence may be presented inside the courtroom to attempt to sway the judge or jury in your favor. Evidence may be utilized outside the courtroom to try to convince the opposing party to move closer to your position, or perhaps to try to convince you to move closer to the opposing party's position. Your social networking behavior may be evidence in your family law case, as well as your emails, your text, and other electronic communications. Although developing case law is teaching us that most electronic evidence is treated as similar to regular paper evidence, there is a difference. Unlike a handwritten letter from which you can usually discern who wrote it, the type of paper it was written on, and the color of ink used, an email has all kinds of hidden information indicating the date the email was created and revisions that were made to the email, as well as how many revisions were made, the location from which the email was sent, and whether the email itself or any part of it was subsequently deleted or changed. This information is often referred to as metadata, which means data about data, or content about content. This is also true for most other types of electronic communication. Sure, it's complicated, but experts can easily locate metadata, and metadata may be evidence in your family law case. In fact, these experts, who are often referred to as computer forensic experts, can locate just about anything that is or ever was on your computer, cell phone, or other electronic device. Now that you understand that your electronic communications and social networking behavior, which can be easily located by a qualified expert, may be evidence in your family law case, you might be thinking about using the delete button or making some changes to your social networking post, perhaps removing photographs you've posted or deleting an email that you sent. Do not remove or change your existing social networking post, electronic communications, emails, photographs, messages, tweets, or text. Hands off that keyboard. Seriously, if you're a party in a pending family law case or you have reason to anticipate that there may be a case, then removing, revising, or changing your existing social networking post or other communications may constitute destruction of evidence. Destruction of evidence is a crime. It can result in financial penalties or even jail time. Jail time, fines, and sanctions notwithstanding, if the court finds that you have destroyed evidence, not only does the court have the right to infer that the evidence you destroyed was just as bad as the opposing party says it was, the court will also likely forever lose trust in your truthfulness and credibility as a witness parent, and party to the lawsuit, a potentially devastating result for your family law case. And don't think that by hitting the delete button, no one will ever know it was there, along with all the metadata that was left behind. With few exceptions, nothing you post on a social networking site is ever really deleted. There will always be records. For example, the Library of Congress keeps every tweet made by every person that has ever tweeted on Twitter. Delete it or not? Seriously, I saw it on the internet. 
An expert in forensic computer examination can easily find deleted items, as well as other activities on your computer, cell phone, or other electronic device. By attempting to cure the problem through deletion, you may only make matters worse. And if you're thinking about using a computer forensic examiner to assist you in your family law case, make sure that he or she is properly licensed as required by the laws of the state of Texas. Forensic computer examinations performed by a person without the statutorily required license may result in the imposition of monetary fines. So talk to your lawyer before you let anyone examine a computer, cell phone, or electronic device on your behalf. And never, never even consider destroying your computer, cell phone, or other electronic device. This is the most heinous type of destruction of evidence, and any such action will subject you to strict penalties and sanctions. If you're concerned about how something you may have already communicated electronically may affect your family law case, your attorney may be able to assist you in reducing any potential negative effects through legal and productive means. And if you have any questions about appropriate social networking and electronic communications, always ask your attorney before hitting send or post or any other button that transmits an electronic communication. Remember, what happens in Vegas may stay in Vegas, but what happens on Facebook does not stay on Facebook and may end up in the courtroom. And this applies to all of your social networking and electronic communications. Now that you know that your social networking habits and behaviors, as well as your other electronic communications, may be evidence in your family law case, and you know that you cannot destroy or change that evidence, let's talk about how you can ethically and legally protect yourself from potential problems, such as a posting like this during your custody case, or a change in your Facebook status during your divorce like this. It's never a good idea to list your relationship status as single when you are in the middle of a divorce. The first step in protecting yourself and your electronic communications is to be certain that your computer, cell phone, or other electronic device is password protected so that no one other than you may ever sign on to your electronic device, thereby having access to your personal information and communications. You can insulate yourself further by making sure that your social networking sites, email, and your electronic device are also protected with passwords that have never been shared with another person, especially the person who is on the opposing side of your family law case. It is common in many relationships to share passwords with your significant other or to leave yourself a written reminder of your password in a location where anyone could see it. Now that you're involved in litigation, it is imperative that any of your passwords that may have otherwise been known to anyone else be changed immediately. And all your passwords should be changed to passwords that are random rather than what might be expected. Don't use your birthday, anniversary, pet's name, or other obvious passwords. Use passwords that require memorization, such as random numbers and letters that no other person could ever guess or figure out. You also need to make sure to remove any obvious reminders of what your passwords are. Now that you've changed your password and made sure it's safe and secure, let's talk about your social networking behaviors and what you can do to protect yourself and your family law case from the potential damages of negative social networking evidence. The easiest solution is to cease your social networking activities during your family law litigation. Just sign off for a while until your family law case is over. But under no circumstances, cancel or otherwise eliminate your social networking accounts as the act of terminating the account could be deemed destruction of evidence. Never destroy evidence. If you can't bring yourself to stop social networking during your family law case, try just monitoring your accounts and watching your Facebook friends without actually getting involved in the conversations. If you do post on a social networking site, be aware that every word you type, 
every posting that you like, every group that you join, every photograph that you post may be seen by any person who has the ability to look at your social networking page. This could be your friends, possibly your friends' friends, and even any person who has access to Facebook. Which leads me to the next concern with social networking. Who is able to view your social networking pages? Often you can control who is able to view your social networking pages through your privacy settings. During your family law litigation, it's recommended that the privacy settings on your social networking page be limited only to those persons whom you completely trust, or to no one at all if possible. For example, if you sign onto Facebook in the upper right-hand corner of your Facebook newsfeed or your Facebook timeline, there's an icon that looks like a padlock. Click on the padlock icon. A window will drop down that provides for privacy shortcuts. In the window, the first line allows the option of selecting who can see my stuff. You will then be provided with the option of limiting who is able to read your post by clicking on who can see my future post. If you select friends, a window will drop down that allows you to click on the custom button and customize your privacy settings. The custom privacy screen will allow you to customize who can and cannot see your Facebook postings. Most social networking sites have similar options to customize your privacy settings. If you're not sure who should be able to view your social networking pages during your family law litigation, ask your attorney. Another method of limiting access to your Facebook page is to unfriend the opposing party in your case, as well as any other persons who are your Facebook friends whom you believe it would be appropriate to unfriend due to your family law litigation. If you're not sure who you should unfriend, ask your attorney. To unfriend a friend on Facebook, go to your Facebook timeline and click on Friends. A list of your friends, as well as their profile picture, will appear. Next to each friend's name is a box labeled Friends. Click on that box. A window will appear that provides for many options. On the bottom of the list of options is the option to unfriend. Click on that option and the unfriending will be complete. Keep in mind that with most social networking sites, you can never be absolutely sure that your social networking postings are as private as you want them to be. For example, even if you unfriend the opposing party in your case, your Facebook friends that are also the opposing party's Facebook friends will be able to show or share with the opposing party your Facebook information to the extent your Facebook friends have access. Also, your Facebook friends have the ability to post unwanted information on your Facebook timeline and tag you in photographs. You can alleviate this potential problem in part by changing your settings to require that you be given notice if you are tagged in a photograph. Go to the padlock icon that can be used to customize your privacy settings as demonstrated earlier in this presentation. Click on the padlock icon a window will drop down that provides for privacy shortcuts. In the window, the first line allows the option of selecting who can see my stuff. Just as you can limit who is able to read your post by clicking on who can see my future post, you can also change your settings to allow you to review the things you're tagged in by selecting where can I review all my posts and the things I'm tagged in. And through the same path, you may also change what other people are able to see on your Facebook timeline by selecting what do other people see on my timeline. Again, most social networking sites have similar options to customize your privacy settings. If you're not sure who should be able to view your social networking pages during your family law litigation, ask your attorney. While we're on the topic of your Facebook postings, did you know that you can obtain from Facebook records of all your Facebook activities? It's a simple process. Go to your Facebook timeline. In the upper right-hand corner of your Facebook news feed or your Facebook timeline is a symbol that looks like this. Click on the symbol. Select Account Settings. A screen will appear titled General Account Settings. At the bottom of the General Account Settings screen is an option to download a copy of your Facebook data. Select this option. 
On the next screen, click on the box that says Start My Archive. You will then be asked to provide your password. Facebook archives are password protected. Provide your password and click on Submit. Within a few hours, you'll be emailed an archive of your Facebook data. During your family law litigation, never obtain the opposing party's Facebook data in this manner without asking your attorney first. Such an act might be a serious, perhaps even illegal, breach of privacy, subjecting you to all of the attendant penalties. And importantly, the judge won't like it. Now let's discuss some other information and advice that should be helpful to your social networking and electronic communication during your family law case. Did you know that if you use your cell phone to post on a social networking site, the posting will show your geographical location at the time of the posting? And this may be true for any electronic device that has an activated GPS system. This problem should be alleviated if you deactivate the location services on your phone or any other device that has GPS. You may also need to change the social networking settings on any device that has GPS. Often when you purchase a new cell phone and any other new electronic devices such as iPads or Android supported notepads, these new devices are already set to synchronize with your existing social networking sites. You can merely turn on your new device and you're ready to immediately begin social networking. Although this seems really convenient, you need to be aware that your new cell phone or other new electronic device will probably have default settings that allow open access to your social networking sites. Different settings than the custom settings you have already customized on your existing laptop, desktop computer, phone, or electronic device. So it's important, especially during your family law case, to make sure when you purchase a new cell phone or other new electronic device that you check your social networking settings immediately and customize them. And for you tweeters on Twitter, although you can adjust your privacy settings on Twitter to limit who is able to view your tweets, if you share a tweet that someone else has made, your name will be on that shared tweet forever. And every time anyone else shares that tweet or otherwise selects an option related to that tweet, your name will pop up on that tweet. And speaking of sharing, when you share someone else's post on Facebook, your name and comments will also always appear with that post. So be careful what you share. And be careful what you tweet, even to your closest friends. If your tweet is shared, it will be out there subject to being retweeted and retweeted again. Create a new email for communications between you and your attorney. It's quick and simple, and by doing so, you're separating out emails regarding your family law case from your other emails, thereby reducing the possibility that an important email regarding your family law case might be missed. More importantly, you are also greatly reducing the risk that you may unintentionally Share a privileged communication between yourself and your attorney by hitting reply all or any other accidental keystroke. Never CC or copy emails between yourself and your attorney to anyone other than your attorneys and their staff. By doing so, you may waive the attorney-client privilege as it applies to that email. If you can afford it, buy a new computer, laptop, iPad, or other type of notebook rather than using the one you were using prior to the commencement of your family law case. If you use a new device that no one else, especially the opposing party in your case, has had access to, you can be certain that no one has accessed or otherwise hacked your old device by installing keystroke software. However, do not destroy or sell your old device, as it may contain evidence in your family law case. Remember, you are not legally allowed to destroy evidence. The purpose of purchasing a new electronic device is not to hide or destroy evidence, but rather to be certain that no one has installed tracking software which may allow them to see your private communications. Finally, never communicate about your family law case or anything related to your family law case via social networking. Don't communicate about the facts of your family law case. 
Don't communicate negatively about the opposing party. Don't communicate about when you have court and if you have been to court. And don't communicate about what happened. Don't communicate about mediation, settlement meetings, or collaborative meetings. And if you've been to such a meeting, don't communicate about what happened. Basically, don't communicate about any facts or anything at all that might be relevant to your family law case. If you must post, stick to pictures of your pets. Unless they're a subject of your family law litigation as well. In which case, don't communicate about them either.